I'm going to just tell you welcome to the world of our program. I remember a couple of years ago when I started for the first time writing a code in R environment. I didn't know anything about R, despite the fact that I have developed a, a software system with c .net, with that framework, C++, and many programming languages, but when I actually came to the world of data analytics and machine learning, I realized that R, perhaps, to me, is the best. So that's why I decided to uh, provide you this lecture with R programming, and I'm hoping actually you all enjoy during this lecture and for your future. This is R. Also, this is R, and as you can see, it's similar to many lines of code that you have written so far with comments, using libraries, loading files, applying some techniques, which is not important here now, or the language of data science. And this is originated from this survey that in terms of the ranking for all programming as you can see in survey of data mining expert or is the first and 50% use more than Python well arguably so some people actually believe all uh, Python is better than all or some against them, so I'm not going to uh, talk about this kind of argument, but based on my experience and whatever actually expert in data mining mentioned, it seems that R has powerful actually characteristic that you can actually use in different data analytics and specifically in <coughs> visualizing data. In terms of the reason for being the first, it's free and open source first of all, compared to some platforms of programming languages which you need to spend thousands of pounds for yearly actually for using that kind of platform or uh, environment this is a free and open source programming languages or is technically optimized for vector operations and compared to many programming languages is providing you very easy and straightforward facility to access without explicitly writing a for loop for accessing to elements of R uh, vectors it has a great and fantastic community with the support in which you could actually get many answers from different community of R. And interestingly, because the open source is always actually the new version and new uh, version of actually R will be available and you can actually use. And this is a great thing. Last but not least, we have more than 9,000 library or packages in which you could we have base packages in R and third-party packages in which you could actually take benefit of all of this. So you can imagine how extensible this language and this data analytics programming environment actually could provide you with many, many packages. And interestingly, you could actually be one of the person who develop a new package. So if you have a new idea for any specific, you know, already loads of, we have many, many uh, techniques and methods. We <coughs> develop, wrap, they wrap it in a package, it's very simple, and then upload it, and then some kind of uh, confirmation from some community, and then using as a uh, standard or package, third-party or package. So if you have 
in the future a new idea for a specific data analytics that you can not find anywhere you can write the right hack or packages very easy so these are the main reason that we're gonna use our program so here is just a little bit detail and uh, I'm not going to repeat all of them but uh, just for the sake of completeness open source uh, it's under the GNU public license uh, interpreted language it means there is no any compiler you actually write one line, one line of code and enter and execute the uh, your command a powerful tool for a statistical computing and data analysis highly extensible through the use of user submitted packages that I mentioned thousands of packages again this is another part of the uh, story which I like it it can be integrated with any other like not any sorry with many other uh, languages like C, C++, Java, .NET, and Python. That's why R is really powerful. You can write if you're expert in I don't know Python, any programming languages that you are comfortable to use to write, write a code, and then you can actually call in your R program this code that already written by any program. <coughs> It's, there are some limitations for that kind of uh, integration. It's, it's not so you can imagine this is this is very open actually uh, facility for any programming language and uh, for these programming languages. They are not very specifically dedicated to or customized for a specific tool for libraries in Python or but I mean, the good thing is, the bad thing is, as you mentioned, maybe we cannot actually use some of the facilities that we're expecting, but the good thing is, you can actually call uh, any source code that you already written with this programming language. Again, it's cross-platform. We say cross-platform, it means it can be run on any platform like Linux, Unix, Windows, Mac operating system, and rather has uh, or has object-oriented programming facilities, not much that we're expecting to see from a pro uh, uh, object-oriented programming, but this platform, this language actually provides us rather uh, some facilities of object-oriented programming compared to Python or I'm not going to say any uh, programming language compared to some of the uh, statistical computing or data analytics programming languages and as you can see <laughs> writing and running on a script could be either in a command line interface or let's say simply R or it could be using a graphical user interface which we call our studio with these two nice items. So, as I, was, uh, as I mentioned already, we have, uh, because of the open source nature of R, many actually packages every day uh, being developed by scientists and uh, some of these packages are specifically for visualizing data, which is fantastic, and uh, using uh, for non-parametric statistics, for signal processing, for bioinformatics, specifically in bioinformatics, which I've been working for a couple of years, it's, uh, I didn't find, I haven't found any 
programming platform that could actually analyze the biological data with a huge number of samples and features, uh, what are. So, two steps here actually to use any packages. First, as you know, it must, it must be actually installed, and which is one step, uh, one time step. It means one actually once you uh, install this, it would be for uh, whenever actually you're using that environment. And the second, you need to load uh, the package for using using uh, library function. Library is perhaps would be the first command that you uh, you learning here if you don't know anything about R perhaps. So these are some examples of install packages in R. As you can see, library NMF which is non-negative matrix factorization package for dimensionality reduction. Perhaps you will use this package in a couple of weeks. N plus, again, another uh, library which related to Gaussian mixture modeling. Excuse me. And Shiny, my favorite package, which is a web application framework package for R. As you can see, we have a comprehensive R archive network, which we call CRAN, and you can actually access to this CRAN from this link. So here, uh, this is cran.orgproject.org, the valid uh, address for uh, R. So, and for downloading and installing R, you can actually go to this website. As you can see, we have for three main platforms, Linux, Mac, and Windows. And uh, the, the important thing is we have for other platforms, any uh, other platforms would be also included here. So, but with, uh, for installing R, you can actually go for one of these links. As you can see from here, th this language is a case sensitive language, similar to many uh, other languages, uh, including Linux. So be careful about using name. So if you run this help.start with parentheses or brackets, you can get again this page, which is again uh, there are loads of information in terms of definition, in terms of the resources. So, R Studio, as uh, I already mentioned, with this type of uh, one of these type of icons, when you install, you can see again you can have a console here. Uh, or other parts, something like environment uh, that you can see all the variables and the data types that you have here and you can have again another section here including uh, a way for installing the packages, getting help, plots can be represented here. Technically you using R for programming, however RStudio is is something like accessories that providing you very easy and straightforward environment to work. So it's an IDE that makes R easier to use for <coughs> editing code, debugging, and visualizing tools. And the last slide that I'm going to actually show you here is. Uh, as you can see, we don't need to declare any variable here. Uh, it's not declared actually uh, variables we have, so you can easily use any variables during your uh, source code. And variables, all variables, uh, are a kind of R objects, we call R objects. These R objects could be vector, could be list, matrices, array, factors, and data frames. 
hope you enjoy and if you have any question I'm, I would be here for 10 minutes uh, otherwise uh, see you on Monday at 9 thank you